The Maya civilization is broken up into three time periods. The pre-classic, classic and post-classic. The pre-classic period began in around 2000 BC, which is when historians believe the first Maya settlements arose in the southern Maya area. I believe the first settlements in the southern Maya area arose between the 1800s and the 1600s BC. This area was rich in food and resources such as jadeite, obsidian and serpentine. Obsidian was used to make weapons such as the Makuahuitl. And jade was used to craft knives, axes and hammers. The Maya held jade in high esteem, viewing it as more precious than gold. And elites in later times decorated their bodies in jade ornament to be set apart from the common man. As the Mayans prospered through trade, they would attract the Olmecs to the area, who in the middle pre-classic period took control of Mayan quarries. Olmec occupation would greatly influence the Maya. From culture and traditions, political structure and the quick development of pre-classic cities, Olmec presence in the southern Maya area would only last until the late pre-classic period. And as Olmec influence dwindled, the Maya civilization thrived, taking control of local and long-distance trade routes. Two city-states emerged in this era. Caymanulja in the highlands, which was the most powerful city-state in the late pre-classic era, and El Mirador located in the lowlands, which was one of the greatest cities in ancient Mesoamerica, with one of the largest pyramids in the world. Its name means the lookout. The oldest Mayan hieroglyphs are also dated to this period. But in the midst of their prosperity, the late pre-classic cities collapsed. And many Mayan sites were abandoned. The causes of this collapse are largely unknown, but some have speculated that it was caused by economic and political issues or natural disasters such as flooding and a possible volcanic eruption, which would have halted agriculture in large parts of the southern Maya area and ultimately caused deep population and trade networks to collapse. Following this decline, Mayan presence moved to the coastal lowland areas. And the Totihuacan civilization likely took advantage of this collapse, and took control of the Pacific coastal areas, and would later monopolize trade of jadeite, obsidian and cocoa in the region. The Classic period is broken up into four parts. The Early Classic, 250 to 550 AD, the Middle Classic, 550 to 600, the Late Classic, 600 to 800, and the Terminal Classic, 800 to 900. This period was the Golden Age of Mayan civilization. A time in which about 40 Mayan city states arose with the most prominent areas being the central and southern lowlands. Various city-states rose and fell fighting for dominance of these areas. Teichl and Klukmil fought three wars over a period of 200 years. These wars were similar to the Peloponnesian Wars, in that two city-states struggled for dominance over important regions. The earliest Mayan date recorded is July 8, 292 AD, found on Stela 29 in Tikal, which began to rise in the late pre-classic, possibly being settled as early as 600 BC. With the first structures being built in around 250 BC, and was the most powerful city-state in the lowlands during the early classic period. The first recorded king of Tikal was Yaxeb Ksuks possibly ruling in the latter part of the first century. Yaxeb Ksuks's name was found in Caymanulju, leading archaeologists to believe he hailed from Caymanulju. This first dynasty and other early dynasties of Tikal are mostly mysterious for the lack of records. But the principal dynasty of Tikal was the Jagulapur dynasty. Jagulapur's reign dates back to 320 AD. In these times there were four other city-states which fought for dominance of the central lowlands, Aol and Tun, El Zapot, Yoxa and Xultan. And by 358 Tikal took over Yuaxak Tun and likely vassalized the city. In these times Tikal also subdued other rising powers in the lowlands, 
likely in order to take control of quarries and trade. But Tikal may have also conquered its neighbors for sacrifice. Great Jagirpur or Chaktokikak I, is one of the most well-known kings of Tikal. He is depicted in Stila 39, sacrificing a bound captive to mark the end of a Katan in 376 AD. But in 378 Tikal was taken by the warlord Sayajkak also known as Smoking Frog. Who killed Great Jagirpur and ascended the throne of Tikal. He went on to overthrow various other Mayan cities such as El Peru, Copan, and Duaxactan, replacing them with new rulers. Some of which were descended from Spear Thrower Owl, ruler of Totihuacan. After these invasions, architecture in Mayan cities began to mirror Totihuacan styles. This conquest of the Maya city states ushered in new ideas and new weapons such as the Atlatl or throwing spear. In 379 Yaks, Noon, Ayn, or first crocodile, son of spear thrower Owl, was set up as king of title with Sajkak as regent. First crocodile married a Jaguar royal and his son Stormy Sky, succeeded him in around 404. Under Stormy Sky, Tikal expanded taking control of minor city-states to the southwest and southeast, likely for their cocoa, resources and control of trade routes. But after Stormy Sky's death these city-states regained independence. In around 426 Copan was also taken by Tikal, and Kinich Yaks Kipmo was set up as king. To legitimize his rule, he probably married a local royal. Kinich Yaks Kipmo likely died in battle or after receiving fatal wounds on the battlefield. This dynasty flourished for about 400 years and seems to have gained independence from Tikal sometime around 534. And being sovereign became a powerful center. In the early 6th century, Klukmil rose as an equivalent power to Tikal. After conquering various states, extending its influence, and after Kalakmul conquered Naranjo and then installed their own king on its throne. Wok Chan Koil strengthened his own influences inaugurating Yajort Kinich II in Karakol. An alliance which wouldn't last. Instead Karakol would switch allegiance to Klukmul and in 562 Karakol captured and sacrificed Wok Chan Koil. This was the beginning of Tikal's decline which would last for over a hundred years. Though Tikal's influence declined it defeated Karakol in 564. But by 572 it was clear that Tikal had lost its first war with Kalakmul. The latter part of the 6th century and for most of the 7th century few stele were erected in Tikal. And very few buildings were constructed. Even a king of Tikal in these times sought refuge in Palenque. Showing that the city had lost most of its power and influence. Kalakmil in these times prospered, and reigned supreme over the central lowlands. Palenque located in southern Mexico, thrived in the 7th century. And in 599 Unechan king of Kalakmil invaded Palenque defeating Queen Lady Yol Eknel and they sacked the city. Lady Yol Eknel ruled possibly under tribute for a few more years. And under Ajn Yol Mat Palenque became gained independence so Kalakmil sacked the city again in April 611. Capturing the king and another royal called Janabpatl who both died a year or so after the defeat. Janabpatl's grandson known as Pakal the Great is the most famous Mayan king. Succeeding his mother who became king after the sacking of Palenque in 611, Pakal built great palaces and temples which were greater than those in Tikal. He also allied himself with Tikal and Yaxkilan and these three defeated a six-king alliance. He died in 683 and 28 years later the city was sacked yet again but this time by Tanina. The king who was defeated was Kinich Khan Joy Chaitam II. He was likely executed in Tanina. And 11 years later a new king was crowned, who was a royal but wasn't a direct descendant of Kinich Khan Joy Chaitam II. The people viewed him as illegitimate and a break in the dynastic line.
This along with another defeat by Tanana lead Pale and led the city to be run by warlords throughout the 8th century and by the 9th century the site was in decline. And was abandoned and overgrown. Tikal gained prominence near the end of the 7th century, and defeated Klukmul in a great battle which happened in 695. And in the 740s Tikal defeated El Peru and Niranjo which devastated Klukmul's network of allies. This is around the time that King Jasor Chan Koil I built the Temple of the Great Jaguar. Klukmul's power structure was likely completely collapsed by the 9th century. And it was abandoned in the 10th century. Chichen Itza rose in the 7th century, dominating the northern lowlands. This ascension is parallel to certain major cities declining, such as Yexuna and Koba. The city is most well known for its pyramid, called the Temple of Kukulkan. According to the Book of Chilambalam Chichen Itza fell to the Milpan ruler Hunak Kiel, in the 13th century. But the city was still inhabited at the time of Columbus. The terminal classic period saw city after city falling silent. With less monuments being erected and little to no new construction. Some have attributed this to an early form of biological warfare such as poisoning water supplies with blood and disease-ridden bodies. Tikal began to decline in the 8th century, as many other Mayan cities were collapsing. Populations dropped and there is evidence of various chemical elements poisoning Tikal's water supply. In 869 a last monument was erected to try and revive the greatness of Tikal. But by the end of the 9th century most of the population had left the city. It is believed that the main causes were agricultural failures and overpopulation. The final Mayan date recorded was found in Tanina, 909 AD. As I showed in part 1. It seems that the Mayan religion was founded in the early pre-classical period. Possibly 19th to 17th centuries BC. And it seems that only a few of the captives were sacrificed to the false god, and the majority of the captives became slaves and servants. In the classic era the Mayans didn't mass sacrifice like the Toltecs and Aztecs. But they seem to have mostly sacrificed important individuals such as kings and nobles. But children were also sacrificed. The ball game was also an event in which human sacrifice took place. Often times after a battle took place the captives would be forced to play the ball game, trying to shoot a rubber ball, or sometimes a skull into a goal on a wall. Using their hips, legs, elbows and forearms. And the losers of the game were sacrificed. Human sacrifice to the Mayans mark new eras and renewal of harvests. In the classic period, Mayan kings were seen as godlike. They were believed to be given a divine right of rulership, and they acted as mediators between the gods and the people. They led the army, oftentimes carried out sacrifices themselves, and were tasked with pleasing the gods. The classic Maya kings ruled with absolute authority. In the Papal view the people worshipped the king and second in command. Which is how I believe kings were seen in the classic period. Enchanted and held in very high esteem, like the pharaohs. But in the post-classic period, kings had less authority and ceased to be seen as godlike. In 1250 AD, Mayapur arose defeating Chichen Itza. The city had influence over smaller city-states which surrounded it and at its greatest extent was populated by 12,000 people. The city was destroyed in 1450 AD this was the last great city in Mayan history. It was a walled city with around 4,000 dwelling places. After the classic collapse and the fall of Mayapur many Mayans resorted to a primitive lifestyle. In times past they were farmers, literate, built great structures etc. But in the 600 or so years between the classic collapse and the arrival of the Spaniards many Mayan sites were consumed by rainforests and the sites which weren't completely consumed were homes to squatters. 
The Maya area was also home to much smaller kingdoms such as the Kish Kingdom in Guatemala, which paid tribute to the Aztecs. After the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire, they focused on the Maya area and in 1524 the Kish leader de Canaman was defeated by Alvarado. And after much resistance and almost two centuries of conquest Spain controlled the entire Maya area. In 1823 the Yucatan became independent but only six months later joined the Mexican Federation. The Yucatan gained independence again in 1841 as the Republic of the Yucatan and remained independent until joining the United States of Mexico in 1848. There are currently six million Mayan descendants living in Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras with the largest population of Mayas being in Guatemala.